Okay, part three, guys. So I just want to say, when I'm reading these, I'm reading them like I would picture the, the person that's writing them would, like, their tone. So when I'm reading, like, Tisha's posts, and I'm saying it like, I feel like how she is feeling and, and how she would be saying it, but I'm not reading it that way because it's like, I feel that way. Does that make sense? Because I, I got a couple comments where people think I'm, like, pro- Tisha, I'm not sure why, and that's the only thing I could think of because I've never said anything like that remotely suggests that I am supporting Tisha. So I'm thinking maybe it's because how I read her posts. Like I read them like, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm basically reading it like if she was saying it, how she would intend it to come across. Not because I believe her and that I'm like on her side. I'm just trying to like get into character in a way where I'm like, She's posting it, so I'm reading it how I feel like she meant it, or that she would say it. I'm not reading it in a way, in a tone, where, because how I feel about it, and that I'm trying to, like, stress certain parts, and that I feel passionate about certain things. No, I'm just trying to read it how she would intend it, if that makes sense, or how she would read it, or how she would say it. But not because I support her, or because I relate to her. No, no way. It just gives you a feel of... The text like on any of them that's how I do it I try to like read them how they would you know what I'm saying so you know it just helps makes it more like real if that makes sense besides some of them where I sound so tired because there was parts of these since this was all it's three parts and there's all they were all like recorded at different times edited at different times and stuff so there's some that I'm so extremely tired because there was a couple nights I stayed up all night so those ones you could probably hear how tired I am all right, so let's let's get into it. So I'm not sure if this is a, her MySpace page or just a web page or some page that she has promoting herself, <laughs> whatever. But it's like a page about her. It says Tisha Lynn's page. It has a picture of her. It says, hello, everyone. My name is Letitia Harden, and I am a resident of Pembroke, North Carolina. I am a senior political science major and currently work at the UNCP Computing Center as a Brave Tech. I enjoy playing softball, hanging out with my friends, and just living life to its fullest. I plan to teach law in the future and also volunteer to help local kids with their education and family problems. My mother's name is Deborah, and she is the best mom in the whole world. She has encouraged me to pursue my dreams and never give up. I have a brother named Dakota and a sister named Julie. My boyfriend is Chance, and we have a beautiful three-year-old daughter named Harley. My overall plans is to get the job of my dreams, live wealthy, and have our savior in my life. My hobbies, softball, riding ATVs, swimming, and shopping. Okay. Interesting. So it was when she was still with Chance, and Harley was three years old when she wrote this. wonder how many lies are in here. <laughs> like a political science major. I'm not sure if she was. Um, she was working at UNCP, probably never worked there, never taught law in the future. I doubt she ever volunteered to help local kids. Yeah, she had a, you know, had a teaching job, so she did it as a job. So it'd be volunteer to help local kids with their education and family problems. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe she did volunteer at one point in her life, but so, I mean, it's not, she's saying she plans to do that. So I'm just wondering if she met these goals. And yep, yeah, you didn't meet this one. Have our savior in your life? Nope. He would never have had you murder somebody. Your own freaking stepkid. Nope. And a kid. A child. No, sorry. You don't have him in your life. Okay. So look at this. This is posted by Jules Juju Locklear, which we know is her sister. Tisha's sister. Okay, so she posts this note that Gannon wrote to Tisha. So it says, to Tisha from G-Man. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Tisha, so much. You are the best stepmom ever. I'm so happy that daddy met you. What can I do without you? It's supposed to be, you know, like, what would I do without you? But what can I do without you? Tell daddy I love him so much. Love you breaks my heart i'm pretty sure if i remember where this post came from um her sister posted this after he went missing to basically almost to prove that tisha was a good mom and that g loved her 
and he, she loved him, so there's no way she would do anything to him. Well, you're wrong about your sister, Jules. Juju. That's how you treat people that you love, and somehow uh, she missed the memo on what it is to love somebody. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so next. Okay, so these right here, somebody posted these two together, and it says verified authentic messages between T, pre-hack, so before her account got hacked, and Mike Hoyt, which is Landon's husband, at least at the time he was her husband. I'm not sure if she's still married to him. Let me know. If anybody knows, is she still married to Mike or not? Because I saw messages in one of the groups where they thought that they got a divorce or they're, they were getting a divorce. So I'm not sure if they're still married, but they were married for a while. And she, he was married to her at that time. Like I said, I'm not sure if they're still married. So this is between Tisha and Landon's husband at the time. And it says from Monday or Tuesday of this week. So I'm not sure when this was posted because like I said, these are reposts, so I can't get the original. So what week is she referring to of like the Monday and Tuesday of what week? Um, I'm wondering if it's that Monday or if it's the next week or the Monday and Tuesday, like the Mondays when he went missing. Is it that day or I don't know, but let's read them. Okay. So T says, do what? Really? You think I hurt Gannon? You have lost your mind. And I've never had a DV case. Someone made that crap up. Yes, I cried for Kobe. And you don't know what I did for Gannon or how I cried. And that's not even what happened. I said an accident, as in his decision making. You see, unlike you, I actually have told everyone, for years you are the one who done all the work. So like me, you did it all. And for that reason, you should understand the scrutiny. But if you think for a second I would hurt, this is church, but it's probably Gannon, then you are delusional. So think for yourself what you want. I just got one of the best attorneys in the country, well known for big time famous cases, and he's about to shred this apart. And at the end of the day, you will see she is, was, and always will be a piece of shit who didn't give a damn about herself and money. So don't be blind. You will get done the same. I'm not guilty of anything and it will come out. Don't blame me. The community gave her thousands of dollars to stay there, not Texas. And trust me, Albert hasn't played into her nonsense. I've talked to... And it stops. So T posts about 12 pictures of Gannon. And it says, Gannon is loved and is clearly the center of our lives. I want nothing more than for him to come home. Landon and I had a good relationship through taking care of them and she showed her gratitude for what I did and continue to do. We all want Gannon home. So it cuts in right here. Okay, so some of these might be ones I already read, like a part of this text thread. And so this one I have more. Okay, so this cuts in. And um, remember, so Tisha is the gray and then this other person's blue. So Tisha says, exactly. And the person says, oh, yeah, the video released from when Gannon had burned the carpet by mistake. Everyone was posting how at the end they heard him say he was bleeding. And Tisha says, he did bleed. I never hid that. That's where the blood came from. Once again, another fact I told police. And person says, what was he bleeding from on the video? Because I know it was mentioned how his foot got wrapped in the garage because he stepped on something in there, but never understood the I'm bleeding part on the video. I didn't understand where he was bleeding from in the video. Tisha says, he set a fire on accident. What do you mean? The candle broke from the heat. I jumped on the fire. Person says, sorry, I meant what made him bleed. Was it the busted? Okay, so I don't have the next one. I'm sure she's going to say, was it the busted candle? So then Tisha sends this person the alarm information from all the different movements in the house. So... You know, when the basement door shuts, living room detected. And remember, we were going through that and we couldn't figure out all the times that it says that it was set. Wait, how does it word it here? Let me find one where it says set to no motion. And this person even asks because they don't understand either. Like, what is the set to no motion? Because originally you would think, okay, she was trying to 
cover up her motions, basically, her actions. So she was setting the different detectors to no motion so it wouldn't pick up her motion. But that doesn't go along with it because it does it consecutively. Like, for instance, living room, set to motion. A minute later, set not to motion. A minute later, set back to motion. If she was trying to hide her movements, she would just set it to no motion and leave it that way for a minute, then do whatever she has to do. So I think it's just the way it's worded when it's picking up motion and not picking up motion. But anyway, so we could go through this more in depth again, maybe on a video. But right now, I mean, as far as like all the motions, we could probably go through it and analyze it. But right now, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just reading the text. So anyway, Tisha sends her this, all the motions. And then this person says, hold on one second. Well, Letitia says, so I did all this motion by myself. So she's trying to play this off. Somebody else was in the house because there's no way she could have done all this motion by herself. This person says, that's your alarm things? And Letitia says, yes. And this person says, did you show the people in the groups that? I'm not going to post it because I'm not sure if that's private or not. And they still don't know I've ever messaged you. And Tisha says, no, I didn't. I give it to the reporter who I know. Letitia says, that's fine. I'm not giving it to Facebook. I gave it to the reporter. Who cares if they see it? They aren't the law enforcement, right? And this person says, well, I was just saying that because sharing too much information can hinder the case. And with the way they're digging and everything like that for evidence, they'll just get crazier. Letitia says, good. And when they taint it, it hurts law enforcement. Come after me and maybe start looking up the right tree. Person says, have you spoke to Mike? There were screenshots, but it looked like it was all edited, to be honest. And Letitia says, yes, LOL. And this person says, what does the set to no motion mean? There's so many back-to-back -back of the same doors opening and closing. They're minutes apart, too, of consistent opening and closing the same doors, I see. And Letitia says, no motion means no movement in that area. It clearly shows that there was more than just me in the house. The person says, oh, okay, I misunderstood the things. I was so confused. There are zero actual cameras in the house that is a part of the security system, or you guys didn't get any security cameras on the inside. And Letitia says, no inside cameras. Person says, okay, I'm seeing a lot of movement every few minutes or so apart. Letitia says, yes, because it's just me running up and down the stairs and all around, right? Okay, that's the end of that text thread. And then we have this one, Dr. Stalk, which I'm confused why it's Dr. Stalk. <laughs> is she pretending that she is a doctor? <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, wait, she is. Because remember, she's, she does tell some people she's got her doctorate, which is a lie. Okay, so it says, my phone was left at home. We had G's the whole time. They are actually helping the defense because it would never be in the area. So none of those clowns would be on a jury. And somebody says, does his meds make him sluggish? which I'm sure the reason they're asking that is because of that video. He looks more sluggish than what he would normally look. So people have pointed it out on that video when he gets into the car that day with that morning, I should say, with T. A lot of people say he looks sluggish getting into the car. It's really hard to see because it's so blurry and you can't see much. You could see him walk into the car, but it's just hard to tell. But people that know him could tell that he just wasn't acting like he normally would, like he looks sluggish. And then anyway, so T says, besides, they had an illegal warrant. So all she's worried about is this, the jury and it going to trial and herself and, you know, her getting busted for this and stuff. It's ridiculous. And I mean, we know now, I mean, she did it. But remember, I'm looking at it from back then of what it, you know, what was on her mind and what was on people's mind and how that would look back then, how this, these would look. So back then, her stepson is missing. And she's worried about all this stupid stuff and not even Gannon. And this person's like trying to figure what's going on with Gannon. Like, hey, does it make him look sluggish? And she's just all worried about, oh my God, the defense is never going to, they're never going to be able to get a fair jury. And they did a legal warrant. She's all trying to plan this out legally where she could get, well, like Al was saying on one of the recordings, like finding loopholes and where she could get, like, have a good defense and win this trial if she gets charged. Okay, so next, so here's a post from Tisha's mother, Deborah Sue Locklear. So she posts this in this Gannon Stow search party group. Okay, so it says, 
I was told the Denver station who records had replay issues for the two Gannon video. I wanted to write some instead. Search party. Let's remember analyzing past tense words and why people don't cry a certain way does not mean a person has no emotions. Some people are private or silent cry, and I was very upset that a majority of my search efforts were decreased through all the nonsense. I love Gannon. He is amazing. He is silly and kind. I have cared for him the last two years like he is my very own, and because I wanted to. It does hurt that my participation has... I think it's supposed to be hindered? I don't know. Let's just say hindered. Okay. So it does hurt that my participation was hindered because of all the nonsense. It does hurt with all the false accusations. We are human and these comments that some make are the reason we have hate in the world. And those will be the very same people who will show hate on this thread. Gannon does not like hate. Gannon was so happy on the hike and to eat at his favorite place, Burger King. We had a good talk about how he was thankful to live in Colorado and to have three loving parents. He talked about his switch and buying items for his baby sister. So take my emotions how you want because I'm not crying. The truth is, I cried and cried, but the weight of the world hits because so many people have opinions and names to call. On Monday, he was happy to stay at home and he did have a doctor's appointment. I called the nurse's line and worked on a remedy. Please stop making assumptions. Actions are big, but sometimes a person's heart loves and shows it differently. I'm sorry if you think that my hurt wasn't good enough, but my love and caretaking was. We say we love each other every single day. I would ask that people stop with the guilty stuff because Gannon doesn't have a single family member who isn't filled with joy and love. Share love and know that accusing someone is detrimental to their life and it wouldn't be something that Gannon will like. He was sweet and loving, and I love him so much. Please come home. Okay, so that's Tisha's mom. Okay, here's another post. It says, I am friends with all three. They both have attacked each other's character. But SM and BM are both innocent. Why can't I think of what SM and B- who SM and BM is? I'm drawing a blank. Let me know if you guys know, and maybe as I'm reading it, it'll come to me. Okay, so it says, so if you want me to sum up character, here you go. Landon gave up her kids, does drugs, sleeps with a lot of men, and stands her kids up. T is self-centered, stuck up, and wanted Al, not all the work for the kids full time, just half time. Albert hides behind closed doors, plays all sides because he is too scared to have a say, and hated Landon's husband and threatened him all the time because the guy was good to Gannon. So now that we have character out of the way, these three are innocent. We know for a fact they are. Have confidence in those tips coming in. They are not all speculation. We in South Carolina have worked very hard to gather some very good leads and turn them in. Please search in South Carolina and North Carolina. Thank you, law enforcement. So I don't know who this is posting. I don't know who SM and BM are. I don't know if something's just slipping my mind, but if you guys know what those initials stand for, who they stand for, SM and BM, let me know. Maybe I'm just missing something little. We have Jules, Juju, that's. Tisha's biological sister. This is supposedly her sister too. Yeah, for my sister. I think it might be her stepsister or half-sister. So when you see Amy Lowry sometimes in posts, whether somebody's mentioning her or she's posting something. Okay, so let's read what she has to say. So Amy says, thank you, sis. This is a difficult time for my sister, for myself, and our entire family. Continued prayers are greatly appreciated. Likewise, We also appreciate all those who have and will continue to give financially to support my sister and her daughter as they have had to live in various hotels as they are receiving death threats and harassment, bullying from people actually stalking them. My sister's access to her bank account has been frozen and her vehicle remains in police custody as part of an ongoing investigation. They continue to require funds for lodging, gas, fund, and other items required for daily living. To date, my sister and her daughter has not been given any funding from any fundraising efforts to support Gannon's family, although they both are an active part of Gannon's extended family as a stepmother and stepsister. Please feel free to donate to them via Cash App. You know, I was wondering how they were getting money when, you know, listening to the trial. 
I was I was always thinking like, wonder how they got money to go to all these hotels and to travel and rent this car, you know, because Al wasn't supporting them anymore. Letitia wasn't working. How are they affording getting gas, traveling all over the country, basically, staying in hotels, eating? So yeah, I guess people were donating. They probably got a bunch. People feeling bad, thinking she's innocent, and when something like that happens, people get very generous because they want to help help people out in a rough time like that. Little do they know, she's the one that caused the rough time. It's all her fault, you know. I mean, Letitia. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. I don't know. This is somebody that I guess is friends with Stephanie, the babysitter. So we just, we get an end of one of the messages. The end of that says, yeah, this is the first. And then here's the, here's the message. We actually get the whole part of. Okay, so the name is crossed off. Let's wait it out right here. Let's see what it says. Well, I wasn't saying anything until now. It's already out there. Some already know I'm friends with Stephanie, the babysitter. I've been in constant contact since Gannon went missing. On 129, she called me. I have a record. I don't know if it's saying I have a recording or she just has a record of it. She told me a strange tale. She went out on New Year's Eve with Tisha. For some reason, Tisha said her ex contacted her. He came into a large sum of money. Could she keep it for him? She said it was too much to deposit. She could get into trouble. She said she would hold the cash. I asked Stephanie who the ex was. At the time, we thought it was Harley's dad, Chance. Stephanie had no idea he passed away until recently seeing his obit. Tisha did not say exactly when this happened, how much money, or who the ex was. I immediately told her to contact law enforcement, which she did. Stephanie apparently told someone yesterday, so it's out there already. I wonder if Tisha brought it up to law enforcement, since she brought it up just 27 days before Gannon disappeared. So my questions to her stand. Who's the ex since Chance died in 2014? All right, so here is a post that T posted on Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and say this so y'all can delete me. No desperation here, just to show how dumb people are. It is well with my soul, but I've had enough. Call it trashy, but I've had enough of the lies and threats. Most of y'all on these speculation groups are delusional. First, the neighbor sold the video for money. Then there was another one from the other side that was sent in. But they haven't released that because of these wannabe detectives. It's a tactic to keep idiots busy while we find Gannon. You guys claim to come together, but have brought hate in the same sentences. Gannon's mom didn't give a shit about him or his sister. She had them at motels, abusive situations, criminal scenes with her husband, did drugs. Heck, Gannon even found her iPad with her doing drugs. And we have pictures of those. Albert rescued them from guns in the back of their cars, police stops, living place to place, no home, and even had to fly on a plane from Alaska through the night to bring them back to us because she changed their school three times and had no place to live. She sold his toys, his switch, and other items for drugs. So keep thinking that she cares in raising money. Gannon is still out there, and for those of you making all these speculations in some group are idiots. What about raising money for a reward, not supporting someone who is faking? They know exactly what was told to them, and they have followed those leads. Downing a person who is taking care of kids more than their mom is stupid. Know the facts. They don't involve someone hurting him. This is who you are putting on a pedestal while trying to bully someone else based on tasteless, wannabe keyboard detectives. Do what Gannon would do. Realize he needs to be home so he can be with the people who took care of him and loved him. Okay, so this is one where Harley posts, but probably Tisha, talking under Harley's account like she was famous for doing. Okay, so let's see what these others said before. So somebody said, I met on the other footage that's supposed to be out there. And then it says, that's what I've wondered too. So whether this is Harley or if this is Tisha, which I think is Tisha. She's like looking through probably all the other posts about the case and what's going on. And like, you know, she was even under the Fox 20 comments and anything that was probably about her. She was in all the groups and reading everything and commenting. But anyway, so we have Harley or Tisha saying, or it could be 
Tisha Macon hardly post this. So it says, Tabitha, the police took their jewelry and they have over 10,000 in diamonds from Tisha. There was no other man. My mom worships the ground Albert walks on. She didn't want to stay, not because of Landon, but because her family was yelling at her in her own house and someone was wearing her clothes around and going through her things out of spite. And the police took everything down to her ID and credit cards, so no way to get to work. Besides, she is allowed to have pain as well. She was with them the most, so she loves them. So who, okay, who's going around wearing her things? Wearing her clothes? It says someone was wearing her clothes around and going through her things out of spite. Who? And this is definitely Tisha. I, I don't believe for a second this is Harley. Okay, so next, let's see what else we got. So this is actually, obviously, mom. So this is Harley's phone and between Harley and Tisha. So Tisha texts Harley saying, don't panic, but Gannon turned on a candle downstairs, set the downstairs on fire. I had to get the dogs and Lena out. I had to get the dogs and Lena out and run back downstairs and jump on him with a cover and put it out. I kept jumping on it. First of all, if there's a fire and he's on fire, would you really run upstairs, go get Lena and the dog, go all the way outside to take him outside and then come on and try to put him out? No. You would put the fire out first. Now, if it was a case where it was like too big of a fire and you couldn't, then you would just run out, but you wouldn't go back in. You would just run out, right? But if you're going to go back in and it's and you're able to go back in and put it out, then you would have been able to put it out to begin with before taking everybody out and making the possibility of the fire even getting bigger, number one. Number two, Gannon being more burnt. That's not what you would do. You would put the fire out first and then get everybody out. Am I wrong? I mean, if it was that small of a fire, because obviously it wasn't, it was a small enough fire where she was able to just put it out by herself. Which, I don't even know if there really was a fire like that. But I'm saying, remember, when I'm talking about this stuff, we're going back to back then, what she was saying. So, in what, in her words. So, basically, we're just trying to analyze this for when it was happening, right? And what she's saying. We know she's lying now. And we know, you know what I'm saying? We know all that. But back then, like, how obvious was it? She's saying this stuff. Well, duh. You know, you wouldn't do it that way. That's stupid. Anyway, so, she, yeah, she comes downstairs, jump on him with a cover and put it out. They kept jumping on it. He is fine. He is scared and saying sorry and freaking out. Of course, she had to make sure she added in, oh, he's saying sorry, right? And Harley says, how did he knock it over? And Tisha says, because he must have fell asleep. And Harley says, so it wasn't knocked over? And... Tisha says, yes. Oh my God, can you read? And Harley says, yes. And Tisha says, he must have knocked it over while he was asleep, unless he was awake and lied. So here's a post that Tisha wrote. How the hell is the house a crime scene if he left and didn't come back with me, supposedly? They were saying there's a crime scene with all this blood in the house, which they let people live in during the supposed crime scene for seven plus days. But then a video shows him leaving with me walking. This is an interesting one because remember, this is before they found Gannon, before Letitia was arrested. So it says, she confessed to drugging him and that she drove around for hours, but he would not die. So she had to beat him to death with a bat. I tried to ask the person bat or two by four, and they said they understand it as a bat. Then she stuffed his body into a suitcase. This same person told me Saturday that she was getting arrested Monday, and it was true. So that's why I believe this could be too. So these are an interesting couple of messages here that I'm about to read. Not sure what to make out of it. Let me know what you guys think. So either Tisha's account got hacked, and this was before she was in jail, or this is her messing around. So somebody says to them, praying for Gannon's safe return home. From North Carolina. And T, or whoever this is, pretending to be, well, they're actually not pretending to be T. So you'll see. So this person says, the best president to walk the planet. 
Thank you for being on my side. It was great to hang with the crew today in Daytona. Keep America great again. We love you, Trump. One last time for the 48. Gosh, it's awesome. That's right. T. Yeah. He also brought back Otto from North Korea. T says, Yahoo. For reals, though, we are looking to find evidence in her profile. Whoever's writing to her says, No, I'm not an admin. I'm just wondering what Trump and Daytona have to do with Gannett. Another fake profile sleuth. T says, ESM here. Stay tuned for my live update and pictures from the post. Daytona 500. Keep America great. Says, ah, gotcha. T. Just for your information, Daytona was rained out. And this person says, or T, or whoever the heck it is, says, we are hackers. We are looking for evidence. I'll let you know if we find anything. Somebody says, evidence? She says, Trump gave us this right. Yes, we're ready to find evidence because we know it's in here. And somebody says, that T is innocent. So, I don't know. Just thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, so this is a, a post that she posted on Facebook. It says, I want to thank my family and friends in the Carolinas who know my character and my dedication to our family. I have sleepless nights every day wondering what could have happened differently. Don't let the media fool you with videos and false info. I have cooperated with everyone and given them all that they asked for. Sometimes they let social media create these accusations to keep them busy because people involved in that nonsense have no interest in finding Gannon. With that said, I will only tell the truth, not accusations. I have spent the last six years of my life fighting for custody battles, helped Albert pay for it all, was the only person who stood by him in courtroom after courtroom. I took the kids from coast to coast to be with each parent, even driving through the night, extreme weather conditions, and countless amount of airplanes. This is not to bash any parent going through pain, but to say that I have pain as well. Everyone remembers months upon months when I was the only provider. Albert in Alaska and Landon was all over the place. We rescued the kids from horrible homes, living in motels, guns in the back of their cars, their house getting robbed, all the way up until I got Instagram messages saying that she could not take care of them anymore. Out of love for my stepkids and my husband, I stepped in, delayed getting my doctorate, took care of them because I wanted to, took them on adventures that most kids their age would never see. My husband had to prep the kids every time they went with their mom for their safety until we eventually had them in our home 90% of the time. He works crazy hours, lots of schools, training, and took care of our needs. I took care of these two children like my very own. I wasn't perfect, but everyone saw all our pictures and the love that I gave them. Real quick though, saw the, all your pictures? That's not how you judge love and happiness. That shows you right there that there's a person that's purposely making it look through pictures as something that's not really there. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're like, oh, they saw a lot of our pictures so you can see we're happy. No, the real people would be able to see you and your family in action. It wouldn't be through pictures. You know what I'm saying? It would be through, no, you know that they're happy because you're there and you, and you see it, not through dang pictures. It's all fake. I mean, you know what I'm saying? People could fake. So, they they put up these pictures on Instagram pretending they, they're these happy people and perfect family, perfect life. And yeah, maybe some of them do have okay lives, but like the way they make it seem with pictures is not really how it really is. You know, you guys know, I don't know why I'm getting all into this. Okay, so where are we at? So yeah, I wasn't perfect, but everyone saw all our pictures and the love that I gave them. Was it hard sometimes? Of course, because I grew up with Amy Lowry, my stepsister, and all of our families got along with no problems. So it was difficult navigating through that. But I want everyone to know that it was well worth my soul because I would never harm a child, especially not our children. On Sunday, we went on a hike and Gannon was there crying with me because I was crying. It was the day Kobe passed, but he had no idea who he was, just that I was upset. I had every intention of covering up the fire that he started and protecting his feelings from what punishment he thought he was going to get. That was our plan the next day was to rectify the situation so that his little heart could stop crying. I have that video because somehow my phone was recording and you could hear how sorry he was. Yep, that's it. That's why she posted it. Just trying to figure out like why, like this makes you look worse. There was some kind of intention why she posted that video. She didn't record it on accident. 
she recorded on accident. Why post? You know, why did she post it? Regardless, let's say it did record on accident. She still chose to post it on Facebook. Why? But I think she definitely recorded on purpose. She posted it on purpose. So her intention was to prove that Gannon really was sorry. In her eyes, it's going to show that he actually did do something to be sorry about. So he did supposedly start the fire or dump the wax or whatever. But we're not idiots. Like, we could read between the lines. We could see what's going on. He's upset. So whatever you're saying, he's just, it's hard to explain. But for instance, let's say there really wasn't no fire or he didn't dump it over. I could still see, like, him being so upset and then she saying, promise you didn't do it on purpose. So by him saying, I promise I didn't do it on purpose, I think she's thinking that, oh, well, that's proving to all of us listeners or whoever's listening, watching, oh, he must have really dumped it over. There must have been a, a, a fire, a candle incident, and he must really have dumped it over. Even though they don't say, she doesn't say fire on that video. She just says, you didn't dump it on purpose. I forget the words now. But then she's going to use that to mean, oh, look, he admitted there was one. I'm not lying about that. He just admitted it. So he must have really dumped a candle over because he's apologizing for it. So he must have really dumped a candle over because he's saying he promised he didn't do it on purpose, meaning that he did it on accident. So he really did dump it over. It doesn't always work like that, Letitia, because he's a kid. You took him in a vulnerable spot. We're smarter than that to realize that you could get somebody to say that and an upset a kid for one thing. And then somebody that's so upset and he's in pain and not even realizing how he's being manipulated by you. He's so upset that he's just saying like she's wording it. Did you do it on purpose? And he's saying, no, I didn't do it on purpose because he's answering the question. But what if he just didn't even do it, period? That's not convincing me that he did it because that whole thing. He's upset and he's just trying to tell you that he didn't do it on purpose, but maybe he didn't even do it, period. But let's say he did do it and it was an accident. I mean, why is she trying to prove that? Like she almost won't make, she wants to make sure that she shows that, okay, he was so sorry. Therefore, oh, he must have did something so wrong because look, he was so sorry for it because he did do something so wrong. So I was the nice parent that was just like, oh, I don't want to get you in trouble. So we'll sell something so we don't have to tell Al and you won't get in trouble. That's what she wanted to portray. But the thing is, is it didn't come off that way. It came off, well, I guess after, since we're all listening to it after Gannon's missing, it just comes off as a hurt, sad boy who something really bad just happened. And he's hurt. To Letitia, is all, oh, that's going to make it look like, you know, he's sorry he did do something, you know, and I'm, I'm the nice parent. And, ugh. All right, let's continue. I have the pictures after we returned. How? So please don't believe what these people are speculating. Albert is hurt. He has a lot on him. And he has always left me in charge of the kids. He has to go through his emotions. But we'll start to remember how I help rescue them and have been our family's rock. I'm going to make the next post just about Gannon. But I wanted to clear up some of these accusations and lies. These people have painted me to be this horrible person. And I want people to know the truth. That I had the kids because they were in an unfit situation in which a G of Lightum placed solely with me until Albert left Alaska. I rescued them because I love them. That's the kind of person I am who would continue to love them and treat them like my own, always and forever. Call it what you want because I sit back, let people say horrible things that just wasn't true. Just some of the facts. There are hundreds more, so they need to be looking at finding Gannon, not blaming me. Okay, so this is a post that T posted in this group. It's a Gannon Stout Disappearance and Case Discussion Group by Crime Connect. So it says, it says, First and foremost, I would like to thank all agencies, volunteers, and community members who are working diligently and praying endlessly to bring Gannon home safe. Thank you to my husband, who has stayed strong through this and protected our family to the best of his ability and our immediate and extended family members throughout the East Coast. To Gannon, please come home soon because your daddy is waiting to watch the new Sonic movie that comes out this week. 
and the cool shirt I got you to wear to the theater is in your closet. Social media has been devastating. From the harsh comments, speculations, threats, cyberbullying, etc. It has been a challenge when people are trying to run you off the road, waiting outside your hotel, threatening to kill you, etc. I encourage the sheriff's office to take down those pages that promote negative behavior and violence. Let's do what Gannon would do. Be kind to one another. We have all engaged in something crazy online at some point, but Gannon would want everyone to get along and to focus on finding him. I know that many people have kids and are invested in this because it hits close to home for them. I would like to think that overall, most people are genuine and want to do everything in their power to find G. With that being said, please take a step back for a moment and let me explain to you a few details that were not released. For example, just like the video that was leaked, there are additional details that were hidden due to, one, the department doing its job, two, the effects of social media and how some individuals would criticize or hinder the investigation. I choose to listen. I didn't leak videos or information. But at this time, it's getting later in the process and we just want Gannon home. I feel the need to fill in some gaps. Now, let me stress this. Police have known this since the first interview. Saturday night, G was helping me unload in the garage and cut his foot because there are a lot of tools because Albert does woodworking. He sat on the edge of the car and we bandaged it up. He was good to go. He always loves helping his dad in the garage, building things like his Lego tables and the flower pot they built for me as a gift. After this, I noticed G kept going to the side of the house. He told me he was checking to see if the gate was locked because he was the only one with a gate key. It made him proud to be the man of the house while Albert was away. Fast forward, we did a hike on Sunday, cleared, and shopping on Monday, cleared as well for him getting out of the other side. Please don't think for a second that there isn't enough of technology to determine shadows and movement around the truck. There was also proof from my phone that we had taken a selfie in the truck in our driveway that was time stamped. We always send pictures to Albert when we are out and about or when he is away. That can be scanned for actual time verification. Last, from day one, the sheriff's office has known a description of the person, friend, whom Gannon left with. I explained to them and provided evidence. They had information about G having the key to go out the side gate. Last, they have more in-depth details that go along with this, pointing to who sent the person or why he may have come. Again, I repeat, they have had this initially and I was asked to keep quiet about it so they could have the best shot at doing their job and bringing G home. The last thing they need was a hindrance to their investigation. I encourage you to think of any suspicious cars that may have been in the area watching a few days prior and keep praying for G. Tisha Stout. Okay, so that's the end of the text messages I have. I still want to release all the letters. I know probably all you guys have seen them, but I would like to read them for you guys. I know a lot of people like to just listen. So, yeah, this is the last part. So, unless if I find more, hopefully you guys learned something. Or at least were entertained by her freaking, her crazy mind. But anyway, now I'm going to go try to get caught up on the parts of the trial that I missed. I'm going to try to do a live here, either tonight or tomorrow. I'm really trying for tonight, so hopefully I'll be able to do one tonight. But if not, for sure tomorrow we'll discuss this case. I just want to try to kind of get caught up on some of the trial that I missed before I do a video discussing it. But I guess we could still do a live if I'm not totally caught up. All right, have a good day, everybody. Bye. In the corner of my arm, I have seen a miracle. I have seen. The sun, it shines, it shines for you The grass is green, the sky is blue And there you are, like you are